In this short video lesson, we're going to talk about drawing as an art practice. We can call this the improvisational line, meaning we're going to look at line and mark making, or rather, the nitty gritty fundamentals of drawing and how when we gain fluency in using these, we can get pretty agile at documenting and expressing ideas through drawing. We'll jump right in with this super interesting sketch by Leonardo da Vinci. Here he is documenting his design for a flying machine. There are many ways to make or engage in artistic practice. Somehow the practice of drawing seems to be especially linked to artistic behavior. Have you ever heard someone say they can't draw a straight line as an explanation for their inability to create art? And who has heard of Giotto's circle? As the story goes, in the 14th century, Pope Benedict XI was looking for artists to make work for St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. Emissaries of the Pope asked the famous Italian painter Giotto for a drawing they could take back to the Vatican to prove his worthiness to make artwork for the Basilica. In response, Giotto painted a large freehand red circle. The Pope, upon receiving Giotto's perfect circular mark, recognized it as proof of Giotto's mastery. Drawing is an artistic practice, but certainly not the only one. If you cannot draw a straight line, this should in no way stop you from making art. We can say, though, that drawing remains a fundamental skill for art making. As artists, it helps us to practice drawing in several ways. One, drawing communicates. It allows us to document, identify, and describe our insights in form, shape, and space. Two, Drawing is a tool for visual analysis. Through drawing, we can make keen observations about the organization and relationships of things in space. And three, finally, drawing is an art practice on its own terms. It is a worthwhile and significant artistic practice that requires few resources and has significant impact. So, moving forward, let's look at our drawing task. This is a standard space task where we will look at this established approach to art making as a way to make move toward developing creative approaches. We're going to make four drawings total. Two of these will be what we call informational, where we are trying to convey accurate ideas about the subject. The other two will be narrative or gestural. Here we are trying to convey a mood, tone, or feel through the way we are drawing. Let's explore more. As we move into practice, let's first talk about materials. Our ground is what we're going to draw on, our paper. When we think about the type of paper we'll use, we should think about its weight and its tooth. The weight is how thick it is. A heavier weight is going to allow us to work the surface more without eating up the paper. The tooth is its texture. The more tooth, the rougher the surface, and this is going to impact how crisp or rough our line quality can be. We're going to use pencils and erasers too. Pencils are rated depending on the hardness of the graphite core. The softer the graphite, the darker the line. Hard graphite gives a lighter and more crisp line. Here we have 4H, HB, or number 2, and 4B. Here is our 4H pencil. It's our hard pencil, and, and we can see it gives us a crisp, light line. Here's our HB, or number two pencil. It's our middle softness and gives us a dark line with good detail. Here's our 4B, or soft pencil. It gives us a beautiful dark line, but we lose crispness and detail. Next, let's look at erasers. This is an Arkham eraser. It has a firm body that gives us good control. Notice how it can pick up graphite and smear it, though.
This next is a kneadable eraser. This is more like a firm putty. I manipulate, manipulate its shape, which helps me control how I erase. Notice erasing is also a mark make, making technique. As we work into our project, we're probably using a reference object in the real world or a reference photo. Think about your composition as you do this. This is an act of seeing. Do not rely on the vantage point you're given to determine your composition. I am using a simple viewfinding tool here to help establish my composition. As you do, think about balance of parts in the composition and how your eyes move through it. Of course, we should talk about mark making. Here, I'm making a quick table and I will fill it up with some different lines. I am using an HB pencil, that's our middle density pencil. And here I'm making longer lines and shorter lines. You might notice how they might quaver slightly or be more steady. Speed and agility have to do with this. The broken lines create what's called an implied line. Also, notice how pressure affects the intensity of the line. Here now, these repeated lines, this is a technique called hatching. If I cross them up, it is a cross hatching. Notice how I can build these to develop modeling or value. This is a technique called stippling. I am simply making dots. Like hatching, I could build these for value. We call this technique scumbling, where I'm using a very gestural and jagged marks to create a visual texture. With scumbling, I can vary the pressure of my attack to build value. Last here is just a continuous demonstration of varying pressure. It, it changes the intensity of my mark. I can smudge it with my finger or a stub, and I can work back into it with erasers. To close, I'll show you what I've produced. I've created informational and gestural drawings using a variety of marks on my own composition of my reference object. I took it a step further by cutting them up and pasting them on these blocks. 
The explore, exploration of Marx is the same, but I did this to explore it sculpturally and to foreground the parts that make up the whole.